Well, where have you been? <laughs> Hi everyone, welcome back to Exhaven Harbour. <clears throat> so, where have I been? My goodness, I'm going to show you anyway in a minute what's been going on. As regards the layout, not a lot. Um, I got to a certain point and, and unfortunately the summer here, uh, loads of things have happened. Um, I've had to do a lot of work outside and I'll show you some of that in a minute. Uh, the big project for the, for the garage is still ongoing and I've been going at it for over a month now but it, <laughs> the trouble is it's dependent on so many things but I'll show you that in a minute. It's pretty well wrecked out now. Um, and even at the back of the garage, I've, I've got a like a, a small sort of lean-to shed type thing built, which a lot of stuff's gone in there. But what I'm trying to do, as you can see, I'm just starting to hoover out now, is clear the toot a mess out of this cabin. Uh, I've had to have six trips to the tip when I was clearing out the garage, and I can see me having to at least have one or two more once I've cleared all the toot out of the cabin. So, uh, other things that have happened, um, well, since my dad died, um, my mum struggled a little bit, not mentally, but more physically, because they used to work as a team, and, uh, you know, my dad used to peel the spuds and uh, all that kind of stuff, or peel the potatoes, if you don't know what spuds are, and uh, all, all little things like that. Now, we've, we've had to make a few changes for mum. Um, she wanted me to do a garden but you know it's, it's funny they say when you retired you seem to have less time than you did when you was at work which is very true and I did start doing my garden with my mum but I just haven't got time it's it's really weird and um, especially with all the stuff that I've got to do um, I also wanted to paint the cabin this year um, I <laughs> that's touch and go whether I get that done um, mainly because I'm running out of time. Um, <clears throat> it might seem that I've got loads of time, but unfor well, unfortunately, or fortunately for Mrs. Exhaven and myself, we're off to Australia in August. Uh, very, very unplanned. Um, we've got some very close friends of ours who've gone out there uh, to visit their family on a prolonged stay. And we decided that while we're still young enough, we wanted to make the trip and that was the excuse that we needed. Now, um, probably not the ideal time of year to go to Australia, but um, it's their winter, or I think that might be just coming in, into spring in August. But anyway, I've been looking at temperatures and things, and it doesn't look too bad, and we're going to go to Sydney, um, somewhere up north of Cairns, uh, and then we're going to come back down to Brisbane. Uh, so... Hopefully that we well, it is a trip of a lifetime really, um, something we both really would love to do. So that's taken up all of August. So uh, let me have a quick sip of tea because I've got a very dry throat. Hold on. There we go. Blinking pigeons make me jump every time they move. So um, what I'll do now is take you off the tripod. Um, I might finish that cup of tea first. Maybe to finish up that bit of hoovering. <laughs> um, but I'll show you the garage. Um, I've also checked, washed all my paving recently and the decking, but the paving also needs repointing. And of course, when I've jet washed it, it really did highlight the fact that, and that that needed doing. So there are parts of the cabin that I'm definitely going to paint um, before the winter sets in. The pointing's got to be done, which is, you know, another thing. And the garage project has also got to be finished up. So, and what with the trip to Australia, the time on the layout has been a no-no. I'm hoping from sort of like the middle of September, um, we'll get back on a regular basis again. Um, I'm also, <laughs> I'm only back for about four or five days when I come back from Australia and I'm off to France to play some golf, which was obviously pre-booked before we'd even decided to go to Australia. So uh, uh, <laughs> it's, it's, a heck of a, it's a heck of a few months ahead. So, um, so bear with me, I am still here. I'm hoping to do another update perhaps before we go to Australia. Um, I'm hoping to get out here in a couple, for a couple of evenings, actually a week, um, to, to do some more work on the track lane. Um, 
but again, you know, the Euros are on. I, you know, I, when I retired, I thought, oh, fantastic, because I can now watch all of the football. I know not everybody's into it, but I am, and I really do enjoy watching as many of the games as I can. I spent many years, obviously, at work, and I used to work some awful hours because of some of the things that I used to do. I worked on big projects for some of the investment banks and so on in London, and uh, it just took all my time, and I missed all this sort of stuff, you know, and it, it, it's, it's a real pleasure now to sit down and watch that. Um, I'm videoing this just the day after England scraped through <laughs> uh, against Slovakia 2-1, uh, 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 not playing particularly well in this tournament, but we're, we're still in there. Uh, Switzerland next. Are we going to do it? Who knows? But anyway, I'll be back to you shortly uh, in the next segment and we'll show you what, what's been going on. All right, so see you in a minute, everyone. Right, so here we are in the garage. Um, so the first part, <laughs> if you like, was putting all this racking in here. This is for a lot of my golf stuff and there's still a few of my tools and stuff down there. Um, probably not going to use that for the tools, but we'll... Um, there's still some re rearranging to be done. Now over here, which is being covered at the moment by this box, is my new workbench. So I don't know whether you can see that. Always wanted a workbench, never had one, and it has already proved very, very useful. Um, there it is. It's full glory. So <clears throat> that's all gone in there, and of course all of this racking whether you can see that, I can't get the full, full shot. There we go. So there's still stuff to be sorted out. Um, all those old golf clubs on the top there, a friend of mine will be taking them down to the charity shop that he works for. Um, up the top here, hopefully I won't drop this, there's a loft in my garage. Um, and I've got rid of almost everything that was up there. We've, we've lived in this house since it was brand new. Uh, for 23, 24 years now uh, and there was stuff up there that we had when we moved in and honestly I, Mrs Exhaven you know and I just decided to really get rid of it it was you know it was sitting up there doing nothing so that's the racking right and this is the lean-to at the back of the garage where I've put some shelves up um, it's com it stays completely dry here in the winter under here, which is pretty good. I'm probably going to get a friend to fix a door on there at some point. I could probably do it myself, but I don't want to mess it up. So this has got a lot of the garden stuff that I don't use much. Um, and a few workbenches and horses and so on. Um, but mainly gardening stuff. So uh, that's... <coughs> that's that area there. I don't know whether I can go back any further. Let's have a look. Oh, there we go. So that's that's that area under there at the back, hidden by the uh, hedgerow that's growing over, which probably needs a bit of cover back now. Now, like I said, uh, I jet washed all of my paving the other day, and if we're getting closer, you can see that. A lot of this, it was already coming out anyway, and it's got to be redone, so that's one of my next jobs. Um, I'm going to have a good go at the cabin today, and uh, <clears throat> then it will be on to that. That will be my next main project. Um, and of course the garden. <laughs> it just takes up a lot, of the, a lot of time now, and I like to keep the garden looking nice um, where I can. I'm not a gardener by any means, but... Um, I like things to be sort of reasonably neat and tidy and because uh, we like to spend some time out here, well that's been difficult this year because some of the weather hasn't been that good. Uh, we actually had our first barbecue on Sunday. So there we go. So there's the cabin. There's the rest of the garden. We are very lucky here. We overlook the open fields and we've got this lovely hedgerow that all the birds nest in and we get lots of different of birds including hawks and so on we've got wrens and robins and starlings and pigeons and 
loads and loads of other varieties. It's great. Um, funnily enough, I've, I've had to move the, uh, the bird feeder, which is just going in down in there. I think I could probably put that in today because the cement's dried now. So, uh, yeah, another little job that I had to do. But, yeah, so that's where we're at. And uh, hopefully I'll get back to you before we go to Australia. Um, there are a few other bits and pieces on this video. And uh, that'll kind of wrap it up. This is, this is going to be the opening sequence anyway. So thanks everybody for continuing to watch. Um, my viewing figures will bound to be going down now. Uh, because I haven't posted much. But you know perhaps we can get that up back up in the winter. Cheers everybody. Hi everyone, uh, welcome back to Exhaven Harbour and uh, I just thought um, you might like to see it in, you know, sort of kind of behind the scenes if you like or just something that I've been doing in the evenings is uh, building another one of these small fishing boats um, and maybe as you can see by the uh, cutting mat which is in sort of centimetre squares or 10 mil squares um, it's quite small <laughs> and uh, it's uh, it's been a challenge I've, I've built one already before but I used the Chris and Den um, they're already sort of like pre-cut laser cut cardboard pieces um, and all you had to do is, is sort of basically stick on the um, the outer covering but this time I've decided to do one on my own um, it hasn't been too bad it's a little bit long-winded but it's it's okay but like I say I'm building the cabin at the moment and um, now I've got my fingers in there you might actually be able to see just kind of how fiddly that is um, I'm currently just about to stick on the uh, the back of the cabin door or the rear cabin door can't even get it out of my fingers there's my tweezers there we go there it is and that just sticks on the back there um, there are there is some detail inside the cabin um, which I'm not sure you'll be able to see really but there's bits and pieces there's a, a control panel as you can see at the front there's a wheel that I've cut out as well um, all such tiny tiny parts on an engage model um, this this one that I've built this time, the, the first one I bought was uh, the cabin was right at the front and sat in here. This one is a rear cabin version. And that sort of sits in there like that. And uh, obviously the cabin piece has got to be finished off yet. Um, it is quite detailed, I've got to say. You know, even the the sides, it's, it's all sort of kind of ribbed. Um, quite sort of delicate details. You know, tricky to cut out, but as long as you take your time, it's pretty good. And uh, I'm actually really pleased on how this one is turning out. And uh, I shall come back to you once I've completed it. But um, I just thought I'd show you that. Um, it, it's, taken, <laughs> it's taken me a couple of weeks, actually, to build it on and off. But um, overall, I think if I sat down and done it from the start to where I am now, it would have probably taken me probably three hours so um, you know I have to have a little eye break in between as well so there we are so I thought I'd show you that right so just to sort of round up this update video um, just a couple of things I think at the beginning of this video there was um, uh, a bit showing me building the little fishing boat well, it's it's kind of complete now, um, barring details, you know. And uh, at the moment, it's just being left <laughs> for those details. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it it did take a while to make that on and off. But I think I said in the first segment, um, I think the bottom bottom half of it and the cabin did take about three hours to build from start to finish. But um, that would probably take longer because you do need an eye break because this thing is just so fiddly to make. But in Engage, and uh, I'm, I'm 
really quite happy with how that's turned out. Um, but like I say, it does need a few details um, and that will get them at some stage. So um, we'll move that out of the way. Now, turning up in the post the other day is this beautiful model, the latest uh, from Sonic Models, um, is the Large Prairie. And uh, <laughs> I'm absolutely desperate to get this running, but uh, of course at the moment Exhaven is in uh, a non-workable order uh, and will be for the next month or so, so uh, at least. So uh, that is just going to be as is. But um, I was very pleased with this when it turned up and uh, it really does look the part. And uh, like I say, I'm really looking forward that, to that running around uh, the Exhaven layout once it gets up and running. You know, the first circuit, um, you know, we'll get that up and running hopefully at some point before Christmas, <laughs> he says. Um, but yeah, so that's turned up. So, you know, I haven't completely forgotten about the railway body means and I'm absolutely desperate to get back out there and start doing stuff. But there are other things that need doing before the winter. So um, they will take priority. Now, just beyond this, um, and this is partly uh, Gary's fault from Settlement Carlisle. Hello, Gary. Um, because Gary sort of um, stopped doing his N gauge and he's moving to other things and I think double O gauge is something that he's planning to do. And just out of curiosity, <laughs> I downloaded the scale scenes um, sort of coal hut or yard office, whatever that may be. Let's just turn that one round. And I just wanted to do a comparison uh, in how easy and more difficult it was to build in double O gauge and N gauge. So the one on the left is obviously double O gauge and the one on the right is N gauge, which I haven't quite finished building yet. Um, but I've got to say, <laughs> I was nearly converted to the, the dark side of double O uh, because the this, this was so much easier to build the window, for example, cutting that window out was easy compared with cutting that out because that is so tiny and getting those little squares in cut out of that frame is it's really difficult. It's not impossible, obviously, I've done it there, and uh, but it, it, it was was hard. But, um, you know, don't worry, we are sticking with the uh, engage layout. Uh, uh, it has crossed my mind from time to time about having double O and one day there will be a double O gauge layout uh, out in the cabin but it will it will be above um, Exhaven but that is years and years off and who knows I might not even get there so uh, so yeah we'll see but at the same time I did build the cold staves as well and there's the way, way bridge so, um, yeah, so I haven't been completely idle, but that was just out of curiosity. And this is a free, a free Scale Scenes download, so it hasn't cost me any money to do it. Um, but I have just sort of here and there put it together, but it was much, much easier to do than Engage. I've got to say that, um, which may lead me to do much more in terms of the Metcalf kits, uh, which uh, will be customised as I go. I watched a, a cracking video the other day, it came out a couple of years ago, I think, by World of Railways on YouTube, showing you, I think it was uh, five, maybe ten hacks with Metcalf models, and uh, they showed you using sort of the plastic brick um, sheets to, to make the, um, obviously to make the brickwork up outside to give it a little bit more detail, and... There are varying other ways that you can customise. And I've, I've done that already by using some scale scenes brick paper on a couple of Metcalf uh, cottages, if you remember, uh, a few months back. So the, the thing is with Metcalf, the joy of Metcalf is that it, you don't have hours of cutting out as you do with uh, 
with a scale scenes downloadable kit. Um, but you know, you can. I, I the thing is, and I think I've said it before with uh, the Metcalf kits. There are so many of them on everybody's layouts. I I end up thinking it all looks the same, but they're such lovely kits. They they are great kits, and um, they're certainly worth building and and customising to make your own. You know, to to make your own look. Having said that, I have in that pile over there. You can't see it. Um, I have re-downloaded the 1950s stroke 60s um, freighter, uh, the ship freighter uh, from Scale Scenes. And I'm, I have built one before, but I've done that a long, long time ago when I first started out. And uh, and although it came out quite well, I wanted to have another go at it just to see how, it, how I can make it look now. Maybe no better, I might mess it up as much. But um, anyway. That's what's going to be happening. I, I, I shall be building that and I shall show you my progress as, as things go along. Uh, and I previously said, you know, we're away for most of August and uh, I hope to be back working on the layout in September. I might be able to get a couple of evenings in before we go away, um, but we'll, we'll see how that pans out. No promises there. And I hope to do an update for you just before we go, just to make sure... Um, we're completely up to date. So I'm going to leave it there on this one. Um, I hope you all still enjoy it. I hope you're still watching. Um, once I get back to the layout, we get on to all the stuff that everybody loves to, loves to see. Okay, so cheers for now, everybody, and I'll speak to you in the next update. Cheers. <laughs>